Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, dear friends. It's a pleasure to be here with you right now and be able to speak and transmit what God has been giving us and everything that we desire is to transfer, is to pass to each person listening to us what God has given us. And God is so glorious, so magnificent, so excellent, so infinite and great, so great, but so great that people find it difficult to find Him. People bend over backwards in order to meet God, but He is found alongside those who are pure and sincere. And this purity here is not the purity of life, that the person is very perfect and holy and they live within a church. No, not at all. It means the purity of spirit, the simplicity, transparency, truth, a person who is truthful, even though they may live in sin and have their mistakes and the futility of their ways and so on. But if they are sincere, then they are pure before God. Can a sinner be sincere? Of course they can. Of course. And there is plenty of people out there amongst the sinners that are those who are sincere. And these are the ones that God chooses. That God chooses and He reveals Himself to them because they are sincere. They are simple. Simple. Pay attention. Yesterday, pay attention, look how nice. Yesterday, we spoke about what is written in the Holy Scripture that says, the Holy Text, the Holy Spirit, speaking through the Apostle John, he said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone, pay attention, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So, I was thinking about this and saying, wow, how glorious, isn't it? Because people usually say, I want to get married so I can be happy. But wait a second, if you want to get married, if you are waiting to get married in order to be happy, this means that you are unhappy. And if you are unhappy, will you have eyes? Will you have understanding? Will you have love, the love of the Father, to give to the person that you are marrying with and spend the rest of your life with? So this is the question. So pay attention, if a person doesn't have the love of the Father, then what kind of love can they give to others? <laughs> Look how nice. A person who loves the world or the things in the world, they don't have the love of the Father. It's what's written. It's clear. It's clear. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not, is not, is not in him. And if it's not in him, then what kind of love do they have to give? Tell me. Think, dear friend. What kind of love does a person have to give if they do not have the love of the Father? And they don't have the love of the Father. Why? Because they love the world and the things 
of the world. And that's it. It's clear, very simple, easy, easy to understand. Everyone can understand this. I doubt if you don't understand this. Is there a need of interpretation to this word? Is there a need? No, there's no need. It's simple, very simple. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Oh, come on, Bishop. Oh, Bishop, please. Wait. Oh, but it's what's written. I'm just repeating what is written. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father, of the eternal Father, is not in him. So now you can understand why this world is such a mess. Now you can understand why there is so much suffering, so much hatred and selfishness. You can understand why there is femicide. The man kills the wife, kills the children, uh, the daughter, the wife kills the husband, the son kills the father, the mother. They kill people are full of hatred. And then you ask, but how is it possible? How is it possible for a mother to kill a child? A child of the age of nine years old. How can a mother kill a child just to seek revenge on the husband? That's what it is. It's because the love of the father is not in him. Or the love of the father is not in her. And he says more. He says here, For all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, you know, I, I saw it, I liked it, I want to take it. And the pride of life, the arrogance, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. It's of the world. Jesus said this. It's from the world, and the world will pass away. It's fleeting, and all of its lust will also pass away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So now you can understand why there are those who are called and then they are discarded and there are those who are called and then chosen. Of course, amongst all those who are called, few are chosen because few have opted for the love of the Father, have been giving themselves to the love of the Father and are obeying the word of the Father. And there lies the difference. There is the huge difference between people and people. And you who are watching me right now, evaluate your life. What is inside of you? What kind of love is there inside of you? If your love is to please yourself, yourself, if your love is seeking pleasure for your own self, then the love of the Father is not in you. Because those who love, those who love God, or better, those who do not love the world, or the things in the world, the holy text says that the love of the Father is not in him. So if the person doesn't have the love of the Father, then they have self-love, they have the carnal love, they have the love that is only looking at themselves and they are they are their little 
God, the own God. And then the person, everything that they do goes wrong. Their life is chaos. But many people, many people who think, who use their mind, they say, no, I don't want this for myself. I'm planning to have a life that is full of tranquility and peace. I want to plan my life according, rigorously according to the will of God, my Father. So, my Father, help me, teach me, guide me. You said that when the Holy Spirit would come, He would guide us into all truth. So, guide me, because I need to know how I will be able to conduct my will my desires, and where I should base my life upon, from now on. Dear friend, my dear friend, these words here are not just philosophy from this world. These are not thoughts from evil, from hell. These are not thoughts from third parties. These are the thoughts of God. These are advices from God. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Because those who love the world and the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in them. So, you want to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus, you truly want this, then you have to prove to God that you want it, that you want Him, that you want to meet Him. You have to prove to God. It's pointless for you to say, Oh, I want, I would really like this, I really want that. Many people say, Oh, I really wanted to have an encounter with God. Oh, I wanted the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit. Okay, everybody wants. Who doesn't want? Everyone wants it. Now, to prove that they truly want, the person has to sacrifice their will, their desire, their lust, their lustful eyes. The person has to sacrifice themselves so that then they will be available to have an encounter with God, to know Him, to know the Father. And then they will be able to be born again and be able to call Him our Father in heaven. Did you understand, dear friend? This is it. This is very strong, very glorious. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's why you see so many people who are believers, they believe in Jesus, they believe in Jesus, they believe in the Holy Scriptures, believers who say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, but their life is horrible, it's a mess, they are lacking everything. But why? Is God unfair? Doesn't God fulfill His word? Has he forgotten what he promised? Of course not. The problem is that the person wants to divide. There are people that want to divide the love of God with the love of the world. This is the reality. They love Jesus because he suffered on the cross for them, but they do not love him enough to sacrifice their own life to denounce their own love on behalf of the love that is practical, which is to do the will of the Father. To do the will of the Father. Here he says, the world is passing away. 
and the lust of it, its desires, its lusts, its fantasies, its nightclubs and drugs and drinking, its pleasures, everything will pass away. By the way, today we've started the work in the meetings, especially in the evening service, the night of the soul. We are going to be working in order to make you aware of what is already happening. The four horsemen, the four horsemen of the apocalypse that have already been released, they are already on their way. And if you come to church today, you are going to find out more why, how, who they are. The world is passing away and its lust. But he who does the will of God, of the Father, abides forever. Praise God. Abides forever. Praise God. May the Holy Spirit enlighten your understanding. Open your spiritual eyes in order for you to be able to see yourself. My apologies. I'm sorry if I'm too rude. I'm too frank and I go straight to the point. But there is no other way. I can't see a different way. I can't see it. A different way to tell people and try to awaken them. Awaken them from the slumber of death while they are still alive. Those who do the will of God abide forever. Praise God. May God bless you. And tomorrow, especially tomorrow, in the love therapy at 8 p.m., we are going to have a special moment dedicated to those who live in the search for a true love. You've been a lonely person. You live in solitude. I know what this is like. Esther and I know very well what this is. When she was single, when I was single as well, we know what it's like and we are going to pray for you tomorrow. Here in the Temple of Solomon at 8 p.m. You are my special guest. May God bless you all and I'll see you then. In the name of Jesus. Amen.